welcome again to Unity Fellowship Church in Baltimore. Sunday morning worship experience. As always, we're so glad that you have decided to join us today to allow us to come into your home, into your hearts, into your places of your business, wherever you are. We are so glad to be in worship with you in this way. Today is our children's day, the day that we honor, recognize as a nation, the children, particularly in our churches. And we are so glad to be with our young people today. We are excited about what God is going to do through them all day long, throughout the rest of the week, and throughout this month. And so we want to sing to you, sing along with us. Clap your hands with us, join in praise with us, walk around with us, be in meditation with us, in whatever way you worship and and, and, and praise the God of your understanding, we invite you to be in that place with us today. As we come to tell you that our God is awesome and God is worthy to be praised.
this morning. Good morning, good day, good afternoon. So whatever you watch this service, we welcome you to Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore. We truly serve a mighty good God and we are not ashamed to express that. So thank you so much for joining us so far. We love you. God loves you and so more. We see you, uh, Sabrina and Maritza and Hilda. Welcome to our worship experience. This is our uh, uh, children's day. Um, and so we know that Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They are all precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. I am Reverend Carla Johnson, and I bring you greetings on behalf of my pastor and first family. They opened us up in such a mighty, mighty powerful way, reminding us that our God is awesome, and then reminding us that we truly do serve a mighty good God. The Reverend Dr. Jamie Washington, Elder Reverend Dr. Jamie Washington, and our first uh, a gentleman, uh, Senior Reverend Sam Offer. Welcome to Baltimore's virtual experience. This uh, experience wouldn't be possible without our multimedia team, Brother Ashton, Reverend Rob, myself, and Brother Sean. We thank you so very much for leading and guiding us, our pastor and, and first gentleman, for opening up our service with praise and worship consistently every Sunday. We couldn't do it without you. This second Sunday of June, uh, we rewind the times uh, for a moment and celebrate celebrated as National Children's Day here in the United States. And children look up to adults for their guidance, for their leadership. And, and while their personalities are unique, they develop their characters as they spend time with you or I. And so we, we make special reference here in, at Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore that the second Sunday and the fifth Sunday, we take a moment to highlight our youth and young adults. It doesn't matter if they come on screen, we still bring that energy, we welcome them their creativity. And so this Sunday, you will see a lot of that. Um, Reverend Charles uh, Charles Leonard of the Universalist Church of the Redeemer in Chelsea, Massachusetts, started Children's Day in 1856 as a special day to baptize children. And he originally named it Rose Day. And then in 1995, President Clinton proclaimed National Children's Day as, uh, as October 8th. And then he later, uh, as National Children's Day, um, and then later on, followed by President Bush in 20, uh, 2001, geez, declared the first Sunday, uh, the second Sunday in June would be National Children's Day. And so if you celebrated in October, if you celebrated in June, we just want to celebrate our young people, uh, congratulate them for their accomplishments. Graduations and proms are happening all over the country right now. And so congratulations wherever you're elevating to. We honor today our faculty 
founding prelate, the Archbishop Carl Bean, and the whole House of Bishops of Unity Fellowship Church movement, our founding pastor and prelate of jurisdiction for none other than the Bishop Harris Thomas and his family, Willie, uh, First Gentleman Willie Hinton. We love you all so much. We wish you were sending you big squeezes as you all were on vacation, hopefully relaxing, rejuvenating for the next round. To the UFCM Pastors Council, our siblings in progressive ministry, and, and last but certainly not least, our leadership family of Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore, you all that continue to join into our service, that continue to chat, chat to us right now. We see you, we see you, and we love you. And we couldn't make it possible without your love and energy to continue to click on the link for us. So we are just glad to be in the service one more time. 66 weeks we've been in this virtual experience. And so you know what to do. Tag your friends, continue to put in the chats, throw up some hearts. I see the hearts, I see the, the thumbs up right now. Thank you so much. Share this post. We are in, we are experiencing an amazing service and we want you to connect everybody. We have new arc in the house today. And so we wanna make sure, I see you Brandon in the chat right now, supporting our beloved. So please share this post tag your friends and let them know Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore is in service. We have, an, again, an amazing worship experience. We got some videos from some young people. We got a preacher in the house that's ready to just slay us in the spirit. We have uh, an amazing young one that's going to present to us a beautiful selection. And so prayer, libation, affirmation, welcome, announcements, offering, sermonic selection, sermon, prayer, and benediction. You got to get yours some way. And so we just encourage you to sing along with us, clap your hands with us, stomp with us, don't throw your phone, but get excited because when there's a praise in the temple, there's a praise in the house. You can usher in God's spirit and remove all distractions out. God has, God has opened up a window and pouring blessings out right now. Beloved, it's, it's service time. Let us move to our breathing, our libation and prayer. Now to you, Deacon Nick. Good morning, everyone. I would just ask that you would take a second to just breathe. Just breathe, focus your mind in, let go of all the distractions, let go of everything that has happened last week, whenever, because right now is what matters and what you do forward. Remember in life, the only thing that you can control is yourself. So you work on that and just breathe. I heard my little friend say to me one day this week, he said, one, two, three, four, do this every time I want to roar. So in the name of the young people, just breathe. Now let's move on to our prayer. So good morning again. I am Deacon Nick, and I'm here to pray with you and to bring libation. Wherever you are, can you please clear your head and your heart, and let's pray. Mother, Father, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our children, be them our littles or our big babies. We thank you for this time to come on one accord to praise and honor you. We ask that you show up in this service to deepen our understanding of ourselves in you and through you. Let us listen, God, and acknowledge the love you show us and pour it out to our fellow human beings because God, to love thy neighbor is to love you. We pray, God, for the people who are here and the ones to watch later, that you show them that you got our love and love is definitely for everyone. Be them young, young at heart, gay, straight, trans, queer, black, brown, orange, or purple, and anyone else under the sound of my voice that I may have missed. I pray, Lord, for those sick and ask for healing that in accordance with your will be done. Come dwell in our hearts, equip us, challenge us, comfort us, and teach us. At this time, we'll call on our ancestors to join this service and help us on this spiritual quest. And you can call on your ancestors and add them to the chat if you feel so led to do so. I will start. Please join me with your ancestors. Mary Thompson, Calvin Dawkins, Maggie Galloway, we speak your name. Marjorie Short, Walford Stewart, Cliff Butler, we speak your name. Minister Gladys Rochelle Lawrence and our fur friend, Taurus, we speak your name. From generations past to present, God strengthen our lives and inspire our spirits. And in your living waters flow endless grace and your love is unconditional. In love and light, in Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen.
just to raise your hands and say yes. Just say yes to God wherever you are. God is speaking to somebody right now. And all you got to do is just throw your hands up and just say yes, Lord. I receive it. I believe it. I accept it. And it is so. Yes, yes, yes. But the church say amen. I'm not the preacher, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. But as you understand the multiple ways, the many ways, the myriad ways in which God shows up, you get to know that all day long God is speaking and you get to be in an amen praise and a yes praise with God. Good morning again, church family. I am delighted to be with you to our social media world. We are so glad to be with you today. I am Reverend Sam Offer. I am a senior reverend here at Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore. And I also get to serve as the first gentleman alongside this incredible man, our beloved pastor, the Reverend Dr. Elder Jamie Washington. I am here today to bring you your affirmation. Mm -hmm. And so I was, uh, I, was just, I was just digging and thinking and sitting and pondering and just saying to the spirit, I want to talk to our children today. And of course, as I'm talking to our children on this Children's Day, I'm also talking to our adults. Amen, amen, amen. Because I want us to be able to encourage our children, not from an external place, but from an internal place, that this has been a part of our experience no, no, no. as well. Confucius said, wherever you go, go with all your heart. Wherever you go, go with all your heart. I wanted it to be simple, something that our young people could hold on to. And I just want to say to our young people, keep being great. Keep doing what you're doing with all of your energy. Our parents used to say to us, do your best. Put your best foot forward. Give it your all. Dream big. Yeah, 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 because yeah, 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 if yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't do it, who will? And so I am inviting you today, our young, wonderful, amazing, incredible young people, and we will hear from them throughout the service that wherever you go, go with all your heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give it all you got. Because as you do that, you will see that God will take it and God will expand it. And God will evolve it. And God will enlarge your territory. God will cause you to be great, amazing, and fabulous. And so I want to say to you, we go with you. Amen, amen. amen we go amen, with amen, you. Amen. Wherever you're going, we go with you. We support you. We hold you. And we love you. Again, I want to say to you, wherever you go, go with all your heart. Welcome, welcome, welcome again. Thank you so much for being with us today. I just want to take a moment and welcome you to this experience. We know that we are having you to join with us from so many places, and we're inviting you to put that in the chat where you're joining from. Amen. And we just want to love on you today and welcome you. We know that our Newark family is in the house. And we want to just say welcome to Yay! you. We thank God for you. We appreciate you. We are so glad you're joining us today as well. All across the country, all across America, folks in Unity Fellowship Church movement are gathering together and gathering together to share a message that our Archbishop gave us that God is love, and, and love is for everyone. everyone. We invite you to breathe that in. Yes, yes. God is speaking just right in that mantra. Yes, that's right. So many people have been lost along the way, but heard that mantra, God is love, and love is for everyone, that's right. and has found liberation. Our founding pastor of our Baltimore church, whom we send so much love, also gave us a mantra That's that right. says, God, God loves, loves you. you 
and so do I. That's right. And you know that every Sunday we say that to ourselves, to one another, to those around you, to encourage them that even in the places where there feels like things aren't going the way you want them to go, God loves you and so do we. Perhaps you haven't heard that all week, but we want you to know God loves you and so do we. And as Reverend Sean Robinson would say, the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. And it's so easy, so easy to love. It's so easy. So easy to love. I hear our young people singing yeah, that. Right. I right. hear our young people singing that. So I want to invite you to be with us and to know you're always welcome to be a part of Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore. I am so excited on this Children's Day to be able to introduce a young man, a young young man who is loving, caring, wonderful, outstanding, has so much wonderful and good energy That's right. That's right. in his spirit. And so as we talk about where you go, go with all your heart. I have seen this young man show up in his brilliance and his greatness and with all his heart. Would you welcome today our guest drummer, Brother Josiah Parrish Harris. He's going to come and bless us. Come on, put our hands together and let's welcome him. Jackson, and I'm here to bring you your announcements on this wonderful Children's Day. We have our Sunday morning worship service at 1030 every Sunday morning. We have our spiritual development every Wednesday at 7 p.m. to recap our Sunday morning service at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We have our noonday prayer every Friday at 12 p.m. Just stop by, you know, check in, get a quick prayer, and you can check back out. Or you can stop wherever you are and just have a moment of prayer. We have our refuel chatted up on Friday nights. We be having some awesome conversations. Reverend Sean and Reverend Carla are the funniest ever, and the topics are wonderful. We also had coffee with pastor every second and fourth Saturday at 1030 via Zoom. And honey, we be having some stuff to talk about. The movies that we be finding out that we can watch, they be just awesome. We just have a wonderful time chit-chatting and drinking out coffee. And we had Children's Month. This is Children's Month. The children have wonderful things planned. They're doing wonderful things. We are right now in our children's 
today. We have a wonderful guest speaker, Deacon, Deacon Dr. Davis. She'll be having a wonderful sermon for us later. We have a wonderful um, guest sermonic selection by one of our children, you know, Children's Day, and a child shall lead me. We also have our June fun day, Juneteenth fun day, where we will be having uh, the first eight, the first time is from 12 to 1245, we will be having a scavenger hunt for the children ages four to 14. And then from one to 145, we will be talking about how to become an entrepreneur for children 16 and up, you know, how to learn how to start your own businesses and, you know, make your own little change until you're old enough to get a job or until you're able to find a job. And at two from two forty five, from fifteen to nineteen, we're gonna talk about the topics of parents, all topics, you know, things you wanna talk about, the things that you think you can't talk about, you know, about life and all different aspects of it. And we're just gonna have a wonderful time. This will be a Zoom meeting. Invite your friends, tell everyone, and come on and join us. Then we will be honoring our pastor for, for his anniversary on the fourth Sunday, June the 27th at 1030 with our guest speaker, none other than the wonderful Reverend Pastor Marissa Penderson. We will be honoring our wonderful Pastor Jamie, Dr. Washington. You know, he is awesome. We got the best pastor in the world. We also want to invite you, Antioch University Bridge Program invites you to a virtual bridge open house. Come and learn about the exciting educational opportunities that they have. And this will be Tuesday, June the 15th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Pacific time and 6.30 to 9.30 Eastern time. Reserve to bridge at EULA at Antioch Education or call. Join. It's a free program, a wonderful opportunity. We also have our Maryland Equality and Inclusion Leadership Program. They're also giving a wonderful program in the study. And you can join that program. The applications are due by July the 1st. There's more information on the fire. Please come to our website and get all the information you need so that you can, you know, join the program. Maryland Equality Inclusion Leadership Program. It's a nice thing to do. It's educational and, you know, get to do some things to help our people out. USCM Oral History Project. Wow. Help us tell our story of our movement. Don't let our story go unheard. We have some awesome stories that have come from this movement awesome ways we have helped people, awesome ways people have helped us. Wouldn't you like to join this very important project? If so, please email us at ufcnewarkarchive at gmail.com. It's a wonderful project. Come on, family. Let's get aboard and share our history so it will never go untold and we will live on forever. Fundraiser, fundraiser, fundraiser. Unity Movement Fundraiser, y'all. Let's go, church. The fundraiser to all roads that lead to convocation. Do y'all see that money? That's a money church, y'all. We usually have a money cake, but that's a money church that says God is love. When a $500 money church, $12 per raffle chance. Hmm, that's a lot of money, y'all. We can either use the Scan Me Bar or we can use Evite, Everbright. We got to do it. Come on and join us. 
Jerome will be July the 4th. Get your tickets, y'all. Get your tickets. Win that money. Support our church and our convocation. Register. Register, register, register. Get your registrations in now. You can pay $5 a month. You can start doing it right now. Register for our convocation. It's October the 6th through the 10th. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. You can copy and paste this link or scan this barcode to register, but register, register, register. Please don't wait till the last minute. Please, this is a movement that we love each other and we continue to support each other and grow and grow and grow. We also have a clip. This is our youth month. So we're highlighting our youth this month and we have a clip of one of our youth scoring his first, his, his touchdown, his, the scoring touchdown for his last game of the season, the winning touchdown. Here it is now. I want y'all to know that that little boy has played every position on the field and he has conquered every position. Congratulations, Papa. We also have Molly that has graduated and she's going to high school. We have Javian that has graduated and he's going to junior high school. We have Juicy right here and her birthday. She'll be celebrating her 10th birthday on Friday. Our youth is just growing. We have Diana that was on last Sunday and she has achieved so much. She's gotten all the jobs that she's wanted. She has really achieved the things that she has set out for. Now, we will introduce our speaker. Our speaker. She comes from our Newark church. And she's a very nice lady. She has a beautiful smile. She's an educator with a passion for deep learning with a purpose and, and is equipped with tools to activate their innate power. She believes true leaders inspire others to be in pursuit of their best selves and connect their purpose to every aspect of their lives. Shanisa currently is a deacon at Unity Fellowship Church of York. Professionally, she manages and lead, manages leadership development as director of training and development of Foundation Academy in Trenton, New Jersey. Shanisa is a current long educator. Prior to joining FA, she served as a science teacher science department chairman, vice principal, school principal, direct curriculum and instructor, and acting chief academy officer. She's earned both her ed and original leadership and master's in education administration from Grand Canyon University, as well as her bachelor's of science and biology from Stockton University. We are in for a wonderful word. Before we have that word, we will have our sermonic selection from our youth, Juicy. Now, she has a little cold, but she still wants to try to sing the song. So when our youth is still willing to do, we let them do. But before, she sings, we will have our Bible affirmation, something that we do every Sunday before our sermon. 
This is my Bible. It contains basic instructions before the earth. It is a primary resource in the development of my relationship with God. While I believe it is inspired by God, it is not God. It is not to be used as a weapon, but as an instrument of liberation and life. I will pray over it as I study it, and I will interpret it through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit within. I have the right to question it as I apply its teachings to my life. My heart is open. My mind is alert. I am ready to receive a word from the Lord. Immediately after Juicy finished singing, you will hear from none other than Deacon Dr. Davis. Side of the crying 
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you, Juicy, for that beautiful song. And thank you for saying yes, in spite of you not feeling at your 100% best. I have to start off by just saying thank you for allowing me to join your worship service. I am Deacon Shanisha Davis coming from New Ark. And I really have to just say thank you so much to Elder Dr. Jamie Washington for having me here. Um, Minister Jackson for your constant communication while we were working out getting me here. Um, the whole Unity Fellowship Church Baltimore family. Thank you, New Ark, for being in the room. Thank you for all my friends and family that are here today. Um, just want to start off with, Lord, please just put me aside. I, I'm fully dependent on you as you utilize me to bring forth this word in Jesus' name. I pray, amen. A child shall lead thee is our theme for this month. So happy Children's Day to all of the children. Happy Children's Day to all of the, the children of God over 18 as well. And today's sermon is entitled, Who Told You It Gotta Make Sense? I'm gonna start off by reading from Genesis chapter three, verses one through 10, the fall. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And I'm gonna read 11. And God said, who told you you were naked? So I'm an educator, as Minister Jackson did introduce me. I'm an educator. So I want to start off with three essential questions that I want to I want us to answer and unpack as we spend our time this morning together. The first, why did Jesus tell his disciples that they needed to change and become like little children or never enter the kingdom of heaven? Second question, what do children have that adults don't? that make them the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And the last question that we'll visit today is, how can I become more childlike? So that first question, why did Jesus tell his disciples that they needed to change and become like little children or never enter the kingdom of heaven? So to get started, wanna norm on the terms adult and child. So adulthood, Webster says is this period in a human lifespan in which full physical and intellectual maturity has been attained. So therefore it's a person who is fully grown or developed. So when I think of this, I think of somebody who typically gets to rely on their own merits. They're pretty much self-sufficient. They're independent 
because they have reached full physical and intellectual maturity. On the other hand, a child, it says, is a person between birth and full growth. So they're on that journey to that full attainment of intellectual and physical maturity, therefore making them dependent on the caregiver, or in this case, the source. So again, adulthood is somebody who has reached this full intellectual and physical maturity, whereas a child is still dependent on the caregiver. Now, I want you to stay with me because I know right now it may not make all of the sense in the world what this has to do with a child shall lead. So prior to eating from the tree, Adam and Eve were in this innocent wonderment, childhood for lack of better terms. Life was grand. They wanted for nothing. There was abundant blessings and they saw themselves typically as God saw them. They had no shame, no nothing. This made me think, at what point do children start to take on an alternate view of themselves? Because when you look at little babies, they too are in this innocent wonderment, no care in the world, not really taking on other people's view of them. So when does that happen? So I started to research some child development and I found this study, it said that Children under the age of two, typically when they're babies, they're smiling in the mirror, just playing with that image. They're so happy, bouncing around. Again, that innocent wonderment. But then a phenomenon happens at around two where they start to notice, oh, that's me. And sometimes they start to freeze. They're like, that's what people that's what I look like to people. That's who I am to people. So I go from this innocent wonderment. And I like to think of, that's how God sees us, right? Just in, in the perfection that God made us. And then it says around three to four, they start to shy and hide. They start to shy away and hide. And scientists suggest that that's when they really start to realize how the world or outside influence perceive them liking it to when Eve and Adam ate from that tree. So let's start to unpack this, this scripture. It says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? See right there, crafty and manipulative already because the Eve was previously full aware of the abundance that she had in the garden. But the serpent or the enemy already setting the stage up for this manipulation started to put into her so seeds of lack in her head. So she had access to everything. And now all of a sudden she started focusing, her attention was on the one thing in this garden, full, abundantly full of blessings. The one thing that God said, don't touch. So then the woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the fruit. We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat from that tree in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you'll die. See, so right there, she can have everything, but her focus and attention is now diverted to lack. Just like those stages of awareness in child development, she was a child fully dependent on the source the reality of that sustenance, that love, that joy was all limitless until someone made her aware of lack. Like when a little baby first is made aware of how others see them, they start to shy away from the mirror because we start to put on what other people give us. But not yet in full intellectual maturity because she hasn't eaten the fruit just yet. She started to divert her attention to lack. But then the serpent says, you will not certainly die. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So I want to pause right here and just, I want you to start to reflect. I do a lot of reflection and I want you to think about who is your serpent? Who 
put your attention on lack. Who or what? What stole your joy? What stole your forwardness? What situation convinced you like the serpent convinced Eve to relinquish your audacity in God, your expectancy in God? Who stole your childlike imaginations where you can do and achieve all things? When did your childlike power die? Was it a parent who told you, Shh, stop singing? Was it a friend that did a little giggle when you did this dance? Was it a teacher who told you, no, that answer is not right? Was it a loved one who told you that boys don't play with that or girls can't do that? Who told you that your dreams, your desires don't make sense for where you are right now? We have to go back to that moment in your life or this metaphor, metaphorical garden of Eden so that you can accept that you allowed someone to put their mess on you and you suddenly became independent from the source. You allowed the serpent to manipulate you from your Eden reality and put you in a space of lack. Once you accept that, then we can forgive ourselves because grace is there. Grace is there so we can deliver ourselves from these binds of being limited to only what you see, only what you hear, and we can give it to God. If you just become like little children and to de be dependent on the source again. So think about like an idea that you maybe taught yourself out of this week because you were limited to what you see, what your circumstance said. In your full intellectual maturity adult, you, you know, in your full intellectual maturity, now, now you started to limit yourself to only what you get to see. You started to become dependent only on what you see and hear in your own merits, only your own merits. We've been manipulated into seeing us from a different view. We've been manipulated into looking at lack. So was it a, was that idea of promotion? Was it a new business? Was it a new relationship? Your desires may not seem to make sense because of where you are right now. But that's because you're looking at it like you're independent from the source. Become like a child because God says, who told you it got to make sense? Who said that your imagination can't run free? Who said that God can't step in and do all things? Only if you're independent like an adult from the source do you have those limits. Because if God put that idea or thought in you, God also already equipped you. Who told you it got to make sense? God created us to be powerful. And see, here's the thing. Scripture tells us not by our works alone. Because see right there, that's independent from God. Our power is activated by God's spirit so that we are like little children dependent on God. Yes, God equipped us. But when we tap into and when we become dependent on the source, then our power is activated. See, as adults, we forget to be dependent on the source. We get so arrogant. Just, just like when, when, when we want to be grown, we start moving without permission in our quest to be grown. We know, we, we, we think we know what's best because we've reached full intellectual maturity. And like Adam and Eve, our eyes were open. And now we think we know what's best. We, we kind of start to move like we know what's, we know something better than, than God knows. That's the way we act. I know it doesn't sound right when it comes out your mouth. But when we're not fully dependent on the source, one could assume that what you have is better than what God can give. So let me show you what dependency actually looks like. Praise God. I'm in a, the process of buying a home and I was supposed to close this Friday. I worked tirelessly trying to get all the paperwork on time, you know, relying on my own merits. I, 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 right. What can I fix? I, I kept speaking to the, the mortgage company and I, anything I can do, I will call whomever. See, God does delight in our diligence. Don't get me wrong. God wants us to work, but we have to become like children and become dependent on the source and not our works alone. I got word a few days before my closing was supposed to happen that some paperwork would be coming in late so I wouldn't be able to close on Friday. 
And in my humanness and my adultness and me relying on my circumstance and what I had to offer, I started to panic. I paid for movers. I, I, I'm going on vacation. Later on today, I leave for vacation and I wanted to be able to move into my house and get some stuff settled. And this wasn't according to my plan. Guess what? It didn't make sense to me that I would be able to be in my home unpacking my things because of what my circumstance presented to me. All roads led to I can't close. And truth be told, I didn't close. But what I did do for the past two days was unpack my things and my new home because God does things that doesn't have to make sense. Did I close yet? I did not. But the but the original owner said, you know what? You can move in anyway because I know the closing is going to happen. And that's the type of thing. It didn't make sense for me to be able to do something like that. But God made it so because favor doesn't have to make sense. Favor doesn't have to make sense. When I was relying on my own merits and the circumstance that was presented to me, I started to panic. But then I remembered I get to be fully dependent on God because I am a child of God and God delights to be able to do things for me so that favor moves things out the way. Have people act in ways that they wouldn't normally act just so that I can receive that favor. Being fully dependent on God this morning. Thank you, Juicy, for, for singing this morning. Juicy, she had a cold. She, based on her own marriage, she may not have felt equipped, but she as a child was fully dependent on God. Juicy brought what she had to the table and then allowed God to do what only God can do and then blessed us because of her yes. So don't become so arrogant in our adulthood that we become independent from God because that's when that's when we block off God's power to do things that don't make sense. So I say to you children who are listening, you are the chosen ones. Don't be in a rush to lose that God power or grow up too soon. You have what it takes to get into the kingdom of heaven because you are dependent on the source. You got the goods. We're looking to you to remind us of what it's like when we remind us of what it was like to have that full power in God. We need you to lead us so that you can take us back to that Eden reality and and kick us out of this parallel lack universe that we seem to dwell in. Says that when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some of it and she ate it. Then she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they realized, "Uh uh-oh, I'm naked. So they fit so fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. See, sometimes we start to influence each other to lose our power. We tell each other, we certainly tell our children who they are, who they're not, what they should do, what is within limitations, what is without limitations. We bring each other, you know, a reality check because we've reached this full intellectual, physical maturity. We drag others along with us, force feeding them that forbidden fruit with good intention though. Because we think we have the answer. Remember, we've reached this full intellectual maturity. We, we, have, we have education. We have lived experience. We got a knowledge, some knowledge about the thing. So we've reached full maturity. See, but that word full bothers me because it's, that word full is already a red flag. Because full means a capacity has been reached. And God is a God of expansion. Full although seemingly grand, is still a limit. That's why as adults, we start to settle. We become complacent. We don't ask for more, even if we we feel like we may want it because in our full maturity, we've learned that we, we gotta be grateful for what we got. That makes sense. Whereas a child who wants more is definitely not shy about asking for more. So, They're not ashamed by seconds. See, children understand the vastness and limitlessness of God. 
Children are dependent on the source and know that that source will figure it out. Even if I don't see it happening, that source will figure it out for me. When we eat the fruit, we enter adulthood, adopt this worldly view of ourselves, and we start to put on lack. We get limited about what we think God can provide us because everything has to make perfect sense. But who said favor gotta make sense? Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord God among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? Adam then answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And then God said, who told you you were naked? When God says dream bigger, you say, I I can't because, that's not possible because. When God gives you an inkling to ask bigger, you shake the thought off because, you talk yourself out of it because, you hide from your full potential because you've reached full maturity and figured out you were naked. You adopted limits. You adopted doubt. I adopted shame. I adopted fear. But God says, who told you you were naked? See, see, God knows as soon as those mature, rational, strategic, analytical characteristics start to drown out audacity and expectancy, then there's a glitch in the system. Something else got in your head. You started to perceive yourself as the world may perceive you, as somebody else put something on you. And God says, God says, because that's not me. God says, that's not me. I told you, you were bigger. You were more. You were abundance. You were joy. You telling me all the reasons why you can't because it don't make sense right now. Who told you it got to make sense? That is not childlike. You are not dependent on the source. You're dependent on your own merits and what you can comprehend. Who told you it got to make sense? Whew. See, my great, my, my pastor brought up a wonderful point to me. He said, what if? And you know what? Pastor, pastor Taylor, he does that. W- what if? And, and what if when God called out Adam and Eve, instead of them hiding in shame, they went to God and said, you know what? We disobeyed, we're sorry. Allowing themselves to once again be dependent on the source. The beauty is that now we have Jesus. Jesus came, taught us, suffered, then died, then rose again so that we may have grace. Therefore, don't harbor the shame that is your past living. See, children live in the present. My niece, Money, she tells me that she did something wrong. I say, didn't I tell you not to do that? Yes, auntie, I'm sorry. Wasn't you supposed to do this? Yes, auntie, I'm sorry. Because she's a child. You know, she, she, she was living in that moment. See, Adam and Eve went right to adulting, immediately adopted shame. Then they did that thing where we really try to be grown and said, you know what? Then I'll leave. Adam said, I'm a cleave to this woman and then I'm a leave. But what if the little child in them still existed just to say, I'm sorry, what now, God? What do you have for me now, God? We have that ability because grace, we have grace through Jesus Christ. God, we know your way is better. Thank you for equipping us with the knowledge, but I'm going to depend on you more. I am your child. That second question. What do children have that adults don't that make them the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And we started to to unpack that already. But I want to bring up this scripture, Isaiah chapter 11, verses six through nine. This is from the message. It says the wolf will romp with the lamb, the leopard sleep with the kid, calf and lion will eat from the same trough, and a little child will tend tend to them. Cow and bear will graze the same pasture. Their calves and cubs grow up together and the lion eats straw like the ox. The nursing child will crawl over rattlesnake dens. The toddler will stick his hand down the hole of a serpent. Neither animal or human will hurt or kill on my holy mountain. So God spoke of this perfect world. Pray hanging with predator and a child shall lead them all. 
And I can just start to think that it had to be a child, couldn't be an adult to lead him. Because we start putting our stink all over it, saying all the reasons why that can't happen. I mean, it just doesn't make sense for the predators to just hang with the prey and not try to eat them. But who told you God's favor has to make sense? Favor and perfection in God doesn't have to make sense. It's in our full intellectual maturity in our independence that we've become so knowledgeable, have so much experience that we work ourselves right out of blessings because you have the inability to be free like a child and be dependent on the source. Therefore, having free access to activate God's favor through our faith. As an adult with full maturity, we are so dependent on our own works and what the world says that our arrogance blocks the power of God in our life. The enemy has influence over earthly knowledge, but the enemy is cut off from God's power. In fact, the enemy is cut off from your power because guess where your power comes from? Uh huh. The source. See, like a vampire, the enemy can't get in. The serpent can't get in unless you invite the serpent in. Scripture didn't say a, a, a spell was put on Eve or she was in a trance. Eve chose to accept the serpent tricks. But that's a whole nother sermon. See, everything God desires is for our good. So the point is, is that God's power in us is an enabler, a mountain mover, a miracle worker. Anything opposite to that is simply a lie. So when God hears us accepting these lies and manifesting these lies through our speech, I can see God saying, just like with Adam, who told you you were naked? Who told you it got to make sense? This is why a child had to lead in that scripture because they're not limited by what makes sense. They are dependent on the source, not by their current circumstance. I've read that when babies are discovering something new, they look at it from every angle. They put it in their mouths, they roll it around, they drop it, they throw it just to see what happens. Instead of worrying like an adult how to properly use it, they take the limits off by allowing wonder. I, I wonder what this thing is. That allows each opportunity to be new, not fixed on what you already know or what your circumstance is telling you. They are forgiven of themselves also and others. If, you ever, if you've ever disciplined a child in a few seconds, they're your best friend again because they're living in the moment. They're totally, totally focused on the present. If something happens, if they fall off, they may cry, but they'll get back on. The hurt is gone and the joy stays. They don't harbor or hoard the hurt or resentment. See, we have scars from being hurt or scared, and then we project that. There's some really powerful examples of these children leading in the Bible, relying on the God source. There was the boy when Jesus wanted to feed the 5,000 people, the multitudes. There was this little boy with a, a basket and he had the two fish and five loaves and he offered it. See, it didn't make sense that two fish and five loaves would feed 5,000 people. It didn't make sense. And I could see somebody looking at him saying, what are we supposed to do with that little bit of food and all these 5,000 people? But see, that little boy was a child still dependent on source. He said, I know my God can do something with this. Here it is, take this. And then not only did they feed those 5,000 people, but then they had food left over. So like, like Juicy just showed up and then allowed God to take over, do your part by, by showing up and then be dependent on the source. There was another, another uh, uh, example. Isaac was Abraham's son. And Abraham was asked to sacrifice him, although he had waited for so long to have Isaac. And I, they were walking up to the sacrificial place. And Isaac asked, he said, Dad, I see all the stuff for the sacrifice, but I don't see a lamb. And Abraham said, you know, son, God will provide the lamb. Now, I can see in our uh, adultness, right, we start looking around and say, we go into the sacrifice spot. And there's no lamb. I'm here. Dad is setting up the wood. Dad is starting to bind me. But it, it didn't say that Isaac uttered another word. Isaac depended on the source. He depended on his father and Abraham depended on the source. 
And then the story goes on to say there was a lamb that did appear. See, us, we would have been trying to fix that situation. We'd have been like, Dad, maybe I can go look for one for you. I can go find a lamb. But Isaac was able to stay still and allow God to work. The last example I want to tell you is about David. You've heard of David and Goliath. David has said David was about 15 years old when this happened. They had been trying to find somebody to beat this huge, monstrous, monstrous Goliath. And, and everybody's, you know, full wisdom, their full intellectual and physical maturity. They knew they were no match for Goliath. They decided, statistically speaking, no one can beat him. But a child, a 15-year-old boy stood up. David stood up and said, I can do it. Not independent of God, but dependent on the source, which has no limits. The adults may have tried to talk David out of it, but David knew. David knew that was his place. You know, the adults laughed at him. Oh, that's cute. You're so brave. But no, not you. Nobody can beat him. It just doesn't make sense for this 15-year-old boy to go out and beat Goliath. But guess what? Favor doesn't have to make sense. David just needed to show up. So yes, your works are important. God delights in your works, but we have to become fully dependent on God. That's not the, there are so many other examples of children in the Bible. So that third question, how do we become more childlike? How do we use that grace given freely to us by Jesus to revert to a childlike state, although we've been operating like an adult? We want to become dependent on the source again. Know that you're enough. We have to, like when we talked earlier, it's like, see yourself like God sees you. Don't see yourself like after you ate the fruit, you're naked, you have to hide. We get to have freedom, freedom and joy from, from what other people think of us. We have to trust and believe in the source because favor doesn't have to make sense. And then we have to resist the urge to reach full because that word full is a limit, right? We, We don't have to reach capacity because God has the ability to continuously expand our boundaries. Favor doesn't have to make sense. Regain that childlike audacity to ask. That childlike audacity is not due to arrogance. It's actually the opposite. It's humility because we know whose family we belong to. I have a friend who said her son keeps talking about this mansion. They live in an apartment. Her son keeps talking about this mansion that they're going to have. And she asked him, oh, she laughed. Ha ha, okay, what kind of car you want? He said a Lamborghini. He's five. She laughed at him. I told her, you stop laughing at that boy and you thank him for dreaming bigger than you can, mommy. Because in our adulthood, we get fixated to our current circumstance. This little boy doesn't see our current circumstance as a limiting factor. So I told her, thank him because his expectancy is what's going to give the portal for that blessing to land. See, for him, his circumstance has absolutely no bearing on his dreams or his imagination. Which brings me to that last point. Resist the urge to reach full, reach capacity. Allow God to continuously expand our boundaries. I read a quote and it said, one day your reality will be better than your dreams. See, that's the God that we serve. God is waiting for us to be dependent on God, on the source. And and we are, you know, in our grownness, in our independence, in our shame, in our guilt, in our resentment, in everything else that blocks us from our blessings, that is what the serpent or the enemy put on us. That will make you think that you're actually more mature because you lost your imagination. You look at things in a more realistic view. You're more humble now. You're more intuitive now. But remember, it, it, the scripture started with talking about just how crafty the serpent was. All those things, it looks like those things serve you, but that's how crafty and manipulative the serpent is. It can take things and make it look like it's for your good, but it's not. See, eyes opened after we ate that fruit gave the mind and the enemy greater influence over our spirit in our, over the over God's spirit in our lives. We start trusting ourselves and our circumstance more than God because we became rational adults. 
we've reached the capacity of our physical and intellectual maturation. So earlier I posed a question to you. What was your eye-opening moment? When did you realize that you were naked? Who told you that it had to make sense? What did you stop dreaming for? What did you stop working towards? Because it was past your time. You were too old. It was what you used to do. When did you start believing the serpent more than God? When did you become independent from the source? I invite you, I invite you to revert back to that childlike state and become dependent on the source. Go back there and speak to that thing that you once had, that wild imagination that you once had. And, and, and now we get the opportunity to let go of some of our adulting. Tell your knowledge or your intellect or your experience, anything that has reached that full maturity that you thank it for how they have served you. And you're grateful for how it has advanced your life up into this point. But now you're ready to be limitless. Now you're ready to be like a child and be dependent on the source. And that's liberating not to have to do things on your own anymore. So just repeat after me. I recognize abilities that you have been helpful to me. You are available to me but I no longer depend on you. I will depend on the source. Ashe. Come on, come on, just, just blow up the chat right now for Deacon. She was amazing. Who told you? Who told you it had to make sense? giving us an opportunity to really think about what was that distraction? What was that metaphorical serpent that showed up in us, that gave us a moment that had us not believe and hold on to what the spirit of the divine had already positioned in us? It's so powerful to see this young woman of God show up in such a powerful way, to speak to us as to speak to our children, our young adults, and the child in us as adults, to resist that space of full grownness. My God, my God, I'm fully grown to resist that space such that we have then forgotten who and where our help and strength comes from. Who told you it has to make sense? We thank God. Come on, just give God a hand clap praise for her today. Thank you, God. We want to just take a moment and go to God in prayer and just say, Lord, we bless you right now. We bless you right now for being childlike. We thank you right now, God, for reminding us again that it is important for us to recognize the journey and to stay open to your wisdom to your being the source for all that we need. Thank you, God, for limitlessness, for being limitless, for inviting us to not just be caught up in the things that we know that make sense or that is reasonable as adults. We thank you for that wisdom, and we must also be like children and rely on the source. What a blessing, God, we thank you. And we receive that today, whatever part of that, was for us. Whichever one of the questions we need to focus on, let us be in that space. In the name of love and light and Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen. Ashe, and so it is. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. We are in this space right now where we just want to take an opportunity to bless this ministry. And so we're going to move to our offering. And in our offering space, you're going to see all of the ways that you can give to this ministry, our tithes, our offering, and uh, special gifts and giving. But also in this space, we want you to bless this woman of God. There's an opportunity um, if you if you want to do your regular offering in one way, and then you want to send an extra blessing to this woman of God in, in a second. Just listen to these three ways to be a blessing. If you're using Realm, there's a drop-down menu where you can put in for a love offering for our speaker.
Please make sure that you do that. This woman of God prepared. She didn't just show up. She relied on God, but she came prepared. Let us prepare for our offering. So there are three different ways that you can actually give um, today in our ministry. Um, the first one is you, all our members and those visitors that have visited before who has uh, uh, been used to or, or, or acclimated to the REM process, please feel free to give through REM. We are asking our members to continue to follow that process. The link is in our chat right now. Also, for those members who just want to text or, or visitors who want to text um, uh, UFC Baltimore, followed by whatever amount you want to give to 73256. And then we also have the Cash App option where our visitors who are handy and who are familiar with Cash App, feel free to, to go ahead and cap, capture your love offering through that. We appreciate it. We love you. We honor you just for just uh, thinking of us to chime in with us today. wonderful and amazing space. So all you have to do is go to membership at UFCM, UFCB.org and just put in your information and we will reach back to you so that you can become a part of this amazing community. We want you. We love you. And a child to lead us. We want to thank God for everyone who participated in today's service. We want to apologize to our brother Josiah uh, Josiah Harris Pettigen. Uh, he said his uh, he gave his name wrong. It's Josiah Harris Pettigen. He did that beautiful drum uh, solo. We thank God for Timothy. We thank God for Papa joining us. Uh, just, just do that which is uh, limitless. And we want you to join us this week for our uh, spiritual development where we will continue to engage. We are inviting. Deacon uh, Doctor to join us, uh, Shanisha to join us for our spiritual development. Again, we recap, we go deeper, we explore, we ask some powerful questions, the question around what, what was the serpent? What was the thing that distracted you from the limitless power of God, right? And so why is it that we need to know, why did we keep us tell us we need to become like children? What do children have, right? And then how can we or childlike. Powerful, powerful questions for us to deepen our understanding and We are so grateful. And this week is spiritual development, going us for refuel and that. And we are so excited to come back together next Sunday. Next Sunday, we've got so much, as we said, going on in June. Pride, June 15th, and Father's Day next week. As Reverend Offer named us, whatever you do, Wherever you go, do it with your whole heart, like a child, as we 
So, some of you have already heard it, have already seen it. He can pick names. Then we lost Taurus last week. He was with us in service, and then he made transition. If you're like a child, you send Taurus and love Taurus and other fur babies out there with our whole heart. And we know that God does all things well. See it next week as we come together. And now unto the God who is able to keep us, to, to, to fit us, to help us to be our life. We ask you to cover us this week and give us to be dependent on you as our soul. In the name of love and light, in Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Ashe. And so it is. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Join us every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. for our virtual worship experience. And remember, God loves you and so do we.